Gary Nofield, set is very good. How, uh, how are you now? I'm satisfied. I, uh, obviously, I had some bobbles there. And um, all the time when you add the music, you add the, the, the crowd with the excitement. Uh, you sometimes you know, have a little stumble. I'm not experienced enough to uh, do it perfectly. And then uh, when I was trying to exit, I went the wrong way. I couldn't believe I did that. But uh, he was such a good boy, and he's so... He's so forthcoming, and as I learn to be quieter and quieter on him, uh, he does better and better for me. It's, it has to become a team, eh? Oh, yes, absolutely. That, you know, he knows that when I just lay my leg on him just slightly, that, you know, he goes into whatever, wherever my leg is, that's going to be the gate that I go into. And that when I do my canters, it's really forward, and that he's, I'm riding him forward and not backwards. You know, that's been my problem a little bit. Let's uh, go a little back in, uh, in, uh, in history. Uh, what was the first moment you ever see Lou? Well, I saw him at uh, Las Vegas in person. Uh, we had seen him in pictures, of course, before that as a young horse. But Las Vegas, he was brilliant. And what went up in the mind of Karen in that moment? Oh. I, wanted, I want that horse. I, I wanted to be, be Edward. <laughs> I did, because it looked like he rode so well. And when I tried him, uh, when I went to, to buy him, That, that was the thing that happened, is that he's, there's not too much in front of you and not too much behind you. There's just enough horse all the way around you. And that's the kind of horse you want to breed to, too. Mm. So you saw Ling the first time and you, you, you already knew that's going to be my horse. No, you can never know that. That's just fate. But there was something. There was, it was special, absolutely. And then uh, you make contact with Edward Bell. I actually, Edward called us, and um, so I flew right to uh, the Netherlands uh, to try him to see if he suited me. And then you do a ride for trial? I rode him uh, two days in a row, and um, Robert Dover came over the second day after I called him up that night, and I said, you know, I think you need to get on the airplane and uh, come in and see me on Ling. Uh, and it was very nice. And the first time you were on Ling, what was that for a moment? Um, I don't know. I had dry mouth, you know. Um, I was, I was nervous, um, but it was easy. I was able to do my movements, uh, and he was very, very willing and cooperative. And now, how long are you riding on Ling? It's been almost uh, one year. Uh, he came, I believe, uh, around December 12th when we really started our lessons, and he had to go into a quarantine, and uh, so it's been about a year. And the character of Ling, is that the, the, the character you expected? Uh, actually, better. Uh, he's he's as sweet as any horse I've ever owned. Uh, uh, he tried to bite my finger off once when I had an apple in my hand in the wrong place. But uh, I know, yeah, he <laughs> thought I was food. But uh, he was he's a, a really kind and gentle soul. And did Edward give you some advice? Sure, he always gives me advice. He called me yesterday and said that I did a good job. And uh, back then he he said that I had to become a better rider. And I've tried really hard. Uh, to be the rider that Ling needs. I'm not there yet, but uh, it'll come. Do you get something back of the input of Ed Crux? Absolutely. Uh, his years of experience and then the years of experience of Anki with, uh, with um, Ling. Uh, she's helped me uh, considerably because when she was teaching Edward, she saw all the, the issues that he had and now the issues I have, and she helps me and gives me confidence. So she creates your own competition? Yes, yes. Uh, it, it is my own competition to learn to ride better. I have a competition every day with myself. And before Ling, how far were you with dressage? Um, I had had two Grand Prix horses. I had bought Hexagons Louisville from Lernus van Leren and uh, had had good success with him. Uh, he was amateur Grand Prix Horse of the Year in America. And uh, so I had been making my way up the, the ladder. And I had started at the bottom. I had started in the The, the introductory level worked up to the first, second, third level. I had Appaloosas, paint horses. I had everything that, you know, could walk, trot, and canter. At what age you, uh, you discovered the dressage? About 10 years ago. Yeah. So I've been working for about 10 years. How come? Why only 10 years? I was involved in uh, hunters and jumpers and western horses. And I tried a little bit of everything, but I found that uh, the dressage, the training of the horse was what really, really made me get up in the morning and want to go out to the stable. I like that the best. Uh, the way we do dressage in Europe, it's the same as in the U.S.? It's much more uh, 
it's, it's, it's a much clearer uh, sport here. The children start it from when they're very young. Most of our kids in America start when, uh, after they ride ponies over jumps and after they ride hunters on the hunt field or when they ride uh, after the foxes. And so a lot of our children don't get the, 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 the posture and uh, the, the technique as soon as the children do here in Europe. So we're really you know, sort of behind the eight ball, but we're working on that. We have a very strong youth program. Okay, uh, you are involved in the program? Little bits. There's many people that are really involved in, in helping the young people in America. Um, I like, uh, I helped so sponsor the, uh, the World Cup and I did this last television show, America's Search for the Next Equestrian Star. And uh, I like the media projects. And it's a growing now, the dressage in the yes. States. Yes, and particularly because of Las Vegas in 2005. And it was just announced two days ago, um, that I read at least, that we're going to have it in Las Vegas in uh, 2009. So very exciting. And Las Vegas was very successful, I think. It was the best. We had jumping, we had dressage, and we had everyone together in a place like this, but even larger. And there was applause during the cure, eh? Oh, yeah, everyone loved it. The Americans are a little bit more excitable. I think. I don't know. And the horses, they have to get used to it, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you saw what happened with Ling. You know, yesterday in the prize giving, you know, the little bit of clapping and, you know, you know, I have a clapping tape at home. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. How come they, they are so, 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 so hot, those uh, dressage horses? Um, I think because we need them so quiet. We need them calm and then we need them forward. We need them calm and then we need them forward. And so the better they get, the, the more reactive they are, in my opinion. If somebody come now and wants to buy a link? Oh, gosh. Um, What's for sale? Probably not for sale. I mean, that's, that's a bad thing to ask for this person. I'm not going to answer that. It, it's, it's your thing now, right? You, link and the combination. Absolutely. But it's everybody's thing. Okay.